Hey, how's it going everyone? I'm Craig, and if you're new here, well, so is everyone else because this is my first video. So today I'm gonna to tackle a pretty big project in my house. We've been looking at our old fireplace since we moved in. It's classic builder grade, came with the house. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but it does look a little dated. It's got tile around it. It's got a mantle that's really not our style, what we want. We're in Northern Denver, and I wanna feel like we are always out in the mountains. So that's a look that I'm really going for, more rustic. What I'm gonna try and attempt here, I've never done stonework before, but I am gonna do a dry stack, so I won't have any grout in between the stone. I've seen a lot of people build wood beams and make them look rustic. And fortunately, what I found was an old wooden beam that was out in the oil field. It's already beat up, it's got some cracks and everything in it, so it really looks good and is, is on theme with what I'm going for. So another major thing that I really wanna accomplish is to get clutter off of the mantle. I hate that I've got wires and ethernet and all that type of stuff that are running all over. We don't currently have any power source behind the TV, so we've got this ugly extension cord that runs up the side of the wall. So I really wanna make sure that we get power behind the TV so that I can get rid of those wires. Uh, get everything really buttoned up and have a nice clean look. Really one of my goals with any of my projects is I wanna do as much homework as I can to do the best job that I can so that when someone walks into our house, it doesn't look like a DIY project. It looks like a professional came in. So we'll see if we can accomplish that. I begin the project by removing all the decorations and things that are on the wall and on the mantle. For some unknown reason, this is the only time that I decided to wear my safety gloves during the safest part of the entire project. I removed the TV and the mount that is sitting on the wall. This is one of the issues that I hope to resolve because this bracket does not reach both studs, so the TV is not really well supported back on the wall. I then put ram board down on the floor to protect the hardwood flooring that I had just put down a couple months ago. I then start scoring all the caulking around the mantle. Hopefully what this will do is allow the mantle to break away freely from the wall without pulling any paint or drywall with it. I then use a putty knife to try and separate the mantle a little bit more. I then move over to a pry bar to start pulling away from the wall. The issue here is that the mantle was stuck to the wall so well that I was damaging the drywall as I was trying to pry away. So I used a stud finder to find a stud and use that as a leverage point to wedge my pry bar against it. This didn't work so well, so somewhat defeated, I moved over to start removing the tile from around the fireplace. I then started removing the vertical pillars on each side of the mantle. Finally, I was able to get some leverage against the top of the mantle and got this pulled away from the wall. Fortunately, I was able to leave the mantle in good enough shape to resell it online. It wasn't much, but it was a few bucks towards the project. I then used an oscillating tool to cut into all the cement board that was around the fireplace and pulled this out bit by bit. Here's where I made a giant mess of my entire living room, just with all the plaster flying all over the place. Nice. I head outside to start disassembling the vent. Although I wasn't able to actually pull the vent out this way, I was able to get a good look at how the direct vent actually works with the fireplace. Maybe one more. Nah, never mind. I carefully pulled out the fireplace from the inside, making sure not to bind up the gas supply line that's on the lower left side of the fireplace. So this is a pretty good look at how the direct vent actually works on the back of the fireplace. It's one vent, but you can see that there's an inner and outer vent pipe. That inner vent pipe is the exhaust. That outer vent is what draws in fresh air into the fireplace. Because I'm giving the fireplace a three-dimensional feel and pulling it out further from the wall, I need to extend the vent pipe. This universal vent gives you some adjustment to be able to slide in and out, and will give me enough clearance to slide the fireplace into place. I use a straight edge to cut out the hardwood floor where the fireplace will now sit about four inches out from the original spot. I mask with painter's tape to not leave a residue on the hardwood floor, but to also protect to the edge as I move the fireplace into position.
I then apply a liberal amount of mill pack black around the vent itself. This is designed specifically for fireplace vents and will be rated for the temperatures. Give a nice airtight seal around both sets of vents. So before I close up the fireplace, I wanted a way to be able to run speaker wire, HDMI cable, anything like that in the future. So I wanted to get some conduit and what seemed to be the most cost effective way was this sump pump discharge hose. So just got this in one of the big box stores, about an inch and a half. Uh, so it should fit any HDMI cables in the future. So already drilled a hole up in the floor. I'm gonna run this up through the floor and anchor that upstairs into the back of the fireplace. I begin framing by measuring out my bottom pieces that will be attached to the floor. The fireplace calls for a half inch of clearance of any combustible materials around the metal of the fireplace itself. So I measure that out and nail them to the floor. So now that I have the boards on the floor for the framing, I need to attach the piece of wood up to the top, up on the ceiling. So to do that, I'm gonna use what's called a plumb bob. Uh, essentially what this does is just uses gravity and a heavy weight. Uh, you attach this up at the ceiling and you match up the board down on the floor with this point here and just uses gravity to get you centered. So I will adjust the top left and right or wherever I need to in order to get this to match up to the floor. So I made a mistake and I accidentally cut my boards just a hair too short. So rather than fighting with the board, wanting to move all over while I'm nailing it in, uh, you actually nail a nail and leave it just a little proud of this board and it gives you just enough clearance to hammer it into place. It'll hold it in place uh, when you cut your board a little short so I don't have to waste this board. And it's not a load bearing wall or anything and I'm gonna have a sister joist right next to it that'll cut a little bit longer. So I'm okay with this having just a little bit of a gap uh, just to get it in place. Continue framing up the wall to support all the weight of the cement board and the stones. These center boards here are going to have a number of boards that are cut short that will support the horizontal boards across the center of the fireplace. This is similar to what you would see if you were framing out windows. So my plan is to have a space back behind the TV that's kind of recessed into the fireplace so that I have a little bit more space for some of the electronic stuff uh, so we can keep our internet extender, audio components, all those types of things will be set back in and we can have the TV sit nice and flush and not have a bunch of clutter all over the mantle. So I'm gonna go ahead and frame that in. I framed it in the lower portion. I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna frame in another box here. I'm going to be using a big heavy wood beam as my mantle. So to reinforce that a little bit as I go in to mount that to the wall, I'm going to be tying in these two by sixes in between the studs. This will give me a good anchor point to drive some long screws through the mantle back into these boards.
So I have everything hooked back up. I hooked up my gas lines and I hooked up my wires just to test out the fireplace. The last thing I want to have is put everything together and then realize that something went wrong either with the venting, the gas line, the electrical, anything like that. So got that all tested out. Everything looks good. I, I added some additional framing for the mantle because I'm not exactly sure what height I want the mantle to be at just yet until I start putting stone up on the wall. I got my electrical done. Uh, so I've got two outlets up here. I've got my low voltage lines for my ethernet, my speaker wire, HDMI, whatever I do. I've also added up here uh, some two by sixes just to reinforce the studs. That gives me additional flexibility with mounting of the TVs. What I'm really trying to do here is future proof. So I'm not exactly sure everything that I'm gonna wanna do right now. I wanna just get the stone up. I wanna get the fireplace put back together, but eventually in time, I may wanna add smart switches, add some speakers, all those things. So I'm trying to keep that in mind. So the fireplace currently turns on and off with a low voltage wire that runs up to a switch up on the wall. While the wall was opened up, I ran a 110 wire over to that switch so that in the future, if I wanna add a smart switch, I will need a common wire. So I ran that wire over there it's just sitting back in there capped off. And then in the future, if I wanna add that switch, I can run power to that, get everything hooked back up. And it was a lot easier to do while the walls were torn apart. So I feel real good about where everything's at right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the cement board cut, get it hung up on the wall, and then we'll be ready for stone. I use a straight edge and a razor blade to score the cement board. It's important to note the side of the cement board that you're gonna be using for the application. So this rough side is gonna be used for mortar. The smooth side on the other side is used more for mastic. I slide the level underneath the sheet to raise it up off the ground and snap it down. I then fold it over and cut the rest of the way through. I selected this substrate based on the stone manufacturer and the mortar manufacturer's recommendations. It's really important to take a look at the spec sheets for the materials that you're gonna be using. Originally, I thought that I would need to use expanded metal or chicken wire, but when I took a look at the material spec sheets, it stated to only use cement board. I attach the cement board using hardy backer screws every eight inches apart. This is also based on the stone and mortar manufacturer recommendation. I worked up the corners of the fireplace as my starting point, trying to find different colors and different sizes. Once I had test fit a few pieces of stone together, I would go and mix mortar. This was kind of my approach to the entire project, to dry fit a section that I could hold up with my hands before mixing any mortar. And this just kind of took a little pressure off the whole process, not feeling like I had mortar drying. It didn't show up on camera, but my dad was behind the scenes, laying out stones and trying to figure out patterns that would work. This was a huge help because then we would already have a section laid out and then I could just focus on cutting the stone and mudding it up to the wall. The important thing to keep in mind is just to break up your horizontal and vertical lines. You don't want any horizontal lines that stretch long spans across the fireplace or any tall vertical lines. When I was cutting the stone, I would cut pretty much all the way through on the back side and on the top and bottom of the stone, leaving the side that would face out I would then snap the edge of the stone over the edge of this concrete patch. This gave it just a little more natural finish and it wasn't a perfectly clean cut. When I made my cuts, I tried to taper them back in just a little bit. This allowed the front face of the stone to fit together a little bit snugger. getting ready to address the fireplace mantle and I've got a couple things that I want to do before I hang this up. So I've got a good crack here that is adding a lot of character to the beam. I like this beam a lot because of that, um, but I just want to feel a little bit better about holding it together. So I've got some six inch lag screws uh, that will uh, countersink this in a bit, be able to pull that together just to feel a little bit better like it's going to hold it over time throw a couple of those in. Um, I am going to fix this to the wall 
using these lag screws. So these are four and a half inch. And I'm gonna seat these back far enough uh, that the stone will hide this. It'll be seated down somewhere around here. So that'll be plenty of room for the stone to overhang that, won't be able to see it. And then the way that I'm really gonna carry most of the weight is anchor these. These are 12 inches. Uh, my total beam here is about eight inches, eight and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna anchor this into the studs that I have in the wall uh, and then drill some holes into the beam itself here. This will carry most of the weight of the beam. I have two of these, so I will anchor those. But I'm hoping just these two big chunky all thread, these are three quarter inch. I'm hoping this will carry enough of the weight and these on an angle will support this close enough to the wall. Once I could visualize where the stone was going to fall, I was able to figure out how high I wanted the mantle. I held the mantle at the level that I wanted and my wife marked out a line. I then came through with a level to draw a line across. Once I had the bolts secured in the wall, I used them as a resting point to put the mantle on top. I then got the mantle centered and drew mark underneath the mantle. These would be the reference points that I would use to drill holes in the back of the mantle. It was then time to put the mantle in place. And because I had the great idea to use a solid beam, this of course made the beam super light and was a breeze to install. And I was able to just tap it into place. Tap it into place. I removed the bolts from the wall and with the form of a toddler with a plastic hammer, I hammered these into the back of the wood beam. Here we go. Tap it into place. And just like that, it slid into place. Ah. Easy peasy. I didn't capture it here, but I did drive in three of those shorter bolts at a 45 degree angle on the top and two from the bottom into the wall just to hold the mantle close to the wall. The heads of these bolts were covered up by the stone. I used a sawhorse leg to support the two stones that would span across the top of the fireplace hearth. Once this mortar dried and these stones were in place, I was able to just continue on with the stone process. I used a piece of wood as a ledger board to help support the stone that would span the opening behind the TV. To help keep the stone level or from sagging, I use these screws every now and then.
My father and I installed the TV bracket and the TV, and then it was just finishing touches from there. So overall, I'm really happy with the outcome of the fireplace. We got a dry stacked look. Uh, it gave us a real rustic look and feel to the house. Every time we come down in the living room, we say it feels like we're in a lodge. Uh, the beam came out really cool and natural. We got everything hidden from the mantle. So all of our wires, all of our audio, video components, internet are hidden behind the TV. Got plenty of room to put other things back there. So not an easy project by any means. Took a lot of planning and a lot of thought that went into that. The dry stack process definitely was more difficult than if I was to just go ahead and grout the stones. Uh, but I'm really happy with the look. So thanks for sticking it through and seeing the final product. I do have some plans in the future to add in a smart switch to control the fireplace and maybe some other things like run surround sound. Definitely think that I future-proof this for the things that I may come up with. So I'll probably do some videos in the future about other things that I do with this fireplace. So if you want to hit the subscribe button, I plan on getting some different videos out there of different projects I have around the house.